Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to do a quick plant spotlight on one of my favorite shade perennials. This is Farfugium japonicum, and the name on these guys has a pretty interesting story. So it was originally discovered along streams in Asia, mostly in Japan, and given the name for Farfugium japonicum, and then a couple years later it was rediscovered and given the name Ligularia. This is in the mid-1800s or so. And then shortly after they named it Ligularia, they taxonomists realized the mistake and clarified that it is Farfugium japonicum and that it is the correct name. But even today, over 150 years later, you will still find it for sale in garden centers as Ligularia. So at this point, it's kind of a whichever name you prefer. I personally like to call them Farfugiums just because that's technically the correct name. But if you say Ligularia, most people aren't going to correct you. Um, and then I have two varieties here, as you can see. On my right, I have the variety Shishi Baton. And then on my left, I have the variety Argentia. Um, and so the shishi baton, you can see it has deeply serrated leaves that are dramatically crinkled. The shishi baton and the, and the crispatum are the two varieties that I know of that have crinkled leaves like this. And you can see they're a lot smaller than my other variety here. Uh, and so then the argentia, the leaves are quite similar to the gigantia, which is the most common variety. But the only difference between the Gigantia and the Argentia are that the Argentia has a white variegation around the edges. And then in addition to the white variegation on the edges, the Argentia variety also has a little bit smaller leaves than the Gigantia. The Gigantia leaves get to be about 12 to 18 inches wide, so they're quite large. The Argentia, they will get larger than this, but they're not going to get to a foot and a half. And then this, the Shishi Baton, the one on my right, this variety gets a 12 to 18 inches tall, and, um, and so you can see here in its can, it's about as tall as, as it's ever going to get. It will beef out and get wider, and it'll have a more rounded habit in the garden. I'm only expecting it to get about two feet wide, though. The Argentia, on the other hand, in addition to getting taller, it'll max out at three or four feet, probably closer to three, and then it'll also get probably three feet wide, so it's a little bit bigger than this guy. And then... As for general care, they like a part sun or shade place in the garden. You definitely wouldn't want to put them in full sun, and they are hardy in zones 7 to 10, so they're not super winter hardy. If you lived in a zone 6 and had a mild winter and you mulched them high, you could probably get away with them, but I wouldn't expect that anything colder than a zone 7, you would have very much luck with them long term. Um, and then in addition to a shady spot and a zone 7 to 10, they also don't want to get super dry. Like I mentioned earlier, they are native to stream beds in Japan, and so they like to stay pretty evenly moist. One nice thing about Farfugiums is that they are kind of the canary in the coal mine in the shade garden, and that they will be the very first plant to wilt. Even just on hot days during the summer, the leaves will wilt. If they come back up at night, it usually isn't a sign that they need water, but if they, even after it gets dark, if they're still wilted, that's a pretty good indicator that the entire garden is going to need water. Once they're established in shadier spots, they can usually go a couple weeks between waterings, especially if they're mulched. That's just a result of the fact that shadier gardens don't dry out as quick. But other than that, they are pretty easy going. They will bloom from midsummer to fall. They will send up spikes with little yellow flowers. I tend to just cut them off because I don't grow them for the flowers, I grow them for the foliage. And I personally don't think the flowers are all of all that interesting looking. Um, and then they are also very resistant to deer. So if you, deer are an issue for you, these would probably be a good choice. They are susceptible to snails and slugs though. So if you're gonna plant them, Make sure that you have some snail and slug bait on hand just in case it becomes an issue. You obviously don't want a ton of holes in your leaves, which is what those the snails and slugs will do. But other than that, just fertilizing like you would any other perennial and cutting off flower spikes either before they bloom if you don't like them or when they're done blooming, and then old leaves. Other than that, these guys are low maintenance and so I highly recommend them. These guys are actually going to be planted in somebody's tropical-esque looking garden. Um, and so that is kind of the place that I like to use these especially is in more tropical looking gardens. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.